Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, a couple days ago, I did a little history video about the JFK assassination and a new theory that's been thrown out there. And I mentioned that the JFK assassination is one of the, if not the, uh, most controversial and covered in books and documentaries and news and everything else event in American history. Well, another event that is just like that, that captured our imagination and they've made countless movies about it and wrote books about it and everything else is the shootout at the OK Corral. Now, this was popularized just unbelievably because the movie is so good. In the movie Tombstone that came out about 20 years ago, I have watched that movie over and over again as much as I actually have written down the lines in the movie. It's so well written. However, the movie does. I mean, there are some lines, of course, that are made up and part of the story, but it still depicts the storyline very well. How the events played out is very true, including the shootout at the OK Corral. And I'm talking about it because today is the anniversary of the shootout at the OK Corral in 1881. You know, a part of our history that's forgotten is you have the Civil War that ended in 1865 and the aftermath of that. But you don't realize that a, uh, the railroad was started, the Transcontinental Railroad was started by Abraham Lincoln and the stake was, silver stake was driven in the ground in Promontory, Utah by President Grant. So between the years of the Civil War ending in 1865 and 1900, those 35 years, it was the West in this country. I mean, before the Gilded Age and the develop of the industrial America. And the stories are just so awesome. And I would venture to say, you know, you've got the Custard's Last Stand, which was kind of a downer story, right? Is there's probably no better fun story than to shoot out the OK Corral. It has a challenge. It's quote unquote, good versus bad. It involves some incredible characters and the shootout lasted. You ready for this? 30 seconds. And the corral was a little thing. It's not like you think this big corral. It's like a little corral in the middle of Tombstone, which was a silver mining town that many people would flock to. It's on my bucket list. I've never been there. I'm anxious to go. But all the characters that are depicted in that movie are true. They were the participants. And I always want to make sure I get this right. There was Virgil Earp was the sheriff, and he enlisted Wyatt Earp, Morgan Earp, and Doc Holliday. Ike Clanton escaped, but who was killed was Billy Clanton and both of the McClory brothers were killed. And Morgan, Virgil, and Doc were wounded. You can't make this up. Wyatt Earp, through all that lawing, never had a bullet hit him. I mean, it's kind of weird. I mean, Wyatt Earp never goes shot. But it, it didn't, it was, it was bad. But the way they depicted in the movie is true. They were blowing, Ike Clanton was blowing his mouth off. So the Earps and Ike, I mean, and Doc went down to arrest him because they had their guns. And it all unfolded. But it boomeranged because they came back for vengeance. The Cowboys killed Morgan. And then there was the famous Wyatt Earp ride from hell with Doc Holliday and the rest of them. And by the way, all of that is a true story. Now, one of the neat stories about the shootout, the OK Corral, is the backstories. And I didn't know any of this. And I'm going to promote a book called Tom Glavin. And it's called Tombstone, the Earp Brothers, Doc Holliday, and the vendetta ride from hell. This is funny. You all did not know this, but the Earps, Wyatt, Morgan, Virgil, their brother Jim, and Doc Holliday, were oftentimes on the other side of the law. Their wives were generally prostitutes that they met and engagements of prostitution, and they became their common law. Maddie that's portrayed, that's a true story. Matt, you know, he, he met up with Maddie. They think she was a prostitute, left her for Josephine, never had kids, and they lived at old age. But they were on the wrong side of the law a lot. And 
Part of the backstory leading up the OK Corral is there was some cattle rustling going on, and there's always been rumors that maybe Doc Holliday was involved in it a little bit. <laughs> so fascinating characters, and these guys oscillated, went back and forth between being outlaws and lawmen. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it is it is just so good. Big Nose Kate is a true historical character. Uh, Doc Holliday, Ringo, true characters. Um by the way, they did find Ringo in story. They found Ringo's body dead. Now they don't know who killed him, who shot him, but they did just find Ringo dead. So they took a little license with that. But wasn't that an incredible scene at the end of that movie? Um, so anyway, today we celebrate the anniversary of the shootout at the OK Corral, which captured our imagination. One final thought about this. You all know I love history. And yesterday, Jamie Spinley and I had a good time coming back from the gym. We started talking about history and we said, okay, let's name the top 10 all-time extraordinary historical characters. Because I brought up Henry VIII, and I said, Henry VIII has got to be there. Well, we ended up making 20 of them. Then we Googled the top 100 historical figures of all time, and it's fascinating. We guessed a lot of, we forgot Shakespeare. Um, but let me just share something with you. You know how much I love history. American history, English history, ancient history. I have this place, and you see it in my Facebook lives at home. I have this wonderful walnut wood case, and there's a place for a portrait. And I thought about it. And Jamie, I want you to know that I thought of Winston Churchill. I thought of William Wallace. Uh, I thought of Washington. Um, I thought of Teddy Roosevelt. They were kind of all like in my top tier. And I settled to have a portrait made of Doc Holliday. Why? I find him fascinating. I think Val Kilmore was like an incredible publicity man for Doc Holliday. And he was an outlaw. He was a dentist. He fled Atlanta because of his tuberculosis. He really did fall in love with his cousin who was a nun, stayed corresponding with her. And reason why Doc Holliday was such a fearless gun and knife fighter is he knew he was going to die. He didn't care. I mean, he knew he was going to die. So I'm thinking to myself, I feel like I'm an outlaw fighting the man every day. And I said, well, I'm a gunslinger. So I picked Doc Holly. Now, I got a statue of Wild Bill Hickok, the fastest gun of the West, also on my desk. But I chose it. Now, let me tell you what we did, guys. This is pretty interesting. I took the real-life portrait of Doc Holliday. In other words, what Doc Holliday really looked like and I had him paint it on Val Kilmore's dress of Doc Holliday because I thought Doc Holliday looked, that, that burgundy and everything else, he looked cool. So my portrait is the real Doc Holliday on Val Kilmore's uh, costume. So anyway, shoot out the OK Growl. I'm going to go and watch Tombstone again.